Wildfires have a reputation for being, well, wild. But with science, we can track where they might be headed next. Not me personally, but science people. Like Dr. Melanie Vanderhoof. The first man-made satellite was launched into space over 60 years ago. Its mission was to study black holes, find galaxies far, far away, and maybe even discover alien life. But did you know satellites can also tell us all about this great blue marble we call home? As climate change and extreme weather impact our planet, we are relying more and more on satellites to help us see the big picture. And there's one scientist who has these satellites on speed dial. Meet Dr. Melanie Vanderhoof. I think I became interested in STEM when I was quite young, just in that I really enjoyed being in nature and walking through nature. I've always loved animals, but I also had a high school science teacher that just made science really interesting and fun and hands-on and gave me the confidence to go into science in college. Melanie discovered she could help protect the homes of the animals she loves by studying their ecosystems using, you guessed it, satellite imagery. And today, I'm visiting her at the United States Geological Survey to get a closer look. So you're a research geographer. Tell me all about it. I am. I'm a research geographer for the U.S. Geological Survey. I use data from satellites to study extreme events like droughts, floods, and wildfires. Melanie explains that satellites measure how light reflects off objects on the Earth's surface. This is called reflectance. Snow, trees, and water all have different levels of reflectance. Satellites collect this information in layers, or bands. There's what our eyes can see, which is red, green, and blue spectral bands. But they're also picking up information our eyes can't see, like infrared wavelengths. Taken all together, this gives us a whole bunch of information about our world. Would you like to take a closer look at what we do? Yeah, for sure. You might think you need some kind of special NASA-level control center to communicate with space, but as I'm about to learn, all you really need is a laptop. So I've got two images from Sentinel-2, which is a satellite. These are both from southwestern Mexico. Oh, and... I was going to say it looks like the moon. Never mind. <laughs> Melanie shows me a satellite image of a site where several wildfires occurred in 2019. The areas where vegetation burned are dark because they reflect less light. These are the parts that appear red when the image is classified using the spectral bands. By using satellite data collected over the last 10 years, Melanie can see where the trees are growing back and where they're not. So I can see in this part where the fire has already burned, but how's that gonna help us in the future? So we can use burned area data sets, start to look at post-fire recovery and trends, and start to understand how our ecosystems are changing in response to fire and how that will continue to change with climate change. Because climate change impacts water levels, Melanie shows an example of how satellite data was used in Montana to help restore water to streams that were too low for the fish and farmers. Conservationists mimicked beavers and built dams to reconnect streams with the floodplains. Melanie and her team used a series of satellite images taken over time to help measure the impact of their work. If you're on the ground, you might look around and say, well, this area looks better to us, but we can only see this much of it. But with your help, you can really see the entire extent of the whole area they're working on. Exactly. Thank you so much for today. This is super interesting, and the work you're doing is really important and truly global in scale. Um, I just have one favor. Can you show me where my car is? Because I think my meter might be running a little low. Can you just zoom in really quick? <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to do that. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so much. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe, and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really. I've seen this one over a hundred times.